In this video, I'm going to show you how to model the gear holder for the CNC milling project. So, first step is going to be go into your sim folder here, go to the CNC machining folder, hit create, create a new document, and just go ahead and call it gear holder. Go ahead and hit create. Then we are going to create a new sketch on this top plane. Again, pressing N to normalize it and P to get rid of the planes. And we're going to start with just a bunch of circles. So I'm going to use the center point circle tool and just kind of follow along, put these circles down as I'm doing it. And it'll start to make more sense as we go along. So just dropping a bunch of circles. I'm going to worry about dimensioning it later. And as I'm doing these circles, you can see sometimes it's going to want to snap try and make it so they don't snap that we don't really have to worry about anything being having a weird constraint on it all right so now that i got all my circles in place i'm going to start with dimensioning them so i'm going to press d for dimension starting from the inside circle i'm going to go ahead and make this 0.75 based on the blueprints found in google classroom that's going to kind of auto scale everything next circle is going to be 1.5 and again all these dimensions are on the blueprints in google classroom this one is going to be a radius of 0.188. That means we're going to need to times it by 2 to get the diameter. So I can do that right in on shape and get the dimension for that. This bigger circle here is going to be 2 inches. And then these ones are going to be a 0.25 radius. So that will make it a 0.5 diameter. Now an easy trick for making these all the same, we can go ahead and just hit this equal constraint. Click on this circle and click on this circle and just work your way around that'll make all those equal last circle the dimension is going to be this one right here and we can make that 0 0.201 and then same thing we can go ahead and use the equal constraint all the way around all right so now we have everything all our circles dimension and we need to start dimensioning location so let's start with this circle here that's going to be 0.689 from the edge here from this center point I should say so this center point to this center point is going to be 0.689 from the center point of our whole part to the center point of our other circle is going to be 0.85 and now we can move that in place here so the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure all these circles are lined up with each other so I'm going to use this vertical constraint and I'm going to click on this center point and this center point and then this center point and this center point and then I'll do the same thing with the horizontal although it looks like they're already in line here alright so now everything's turned black so we know it's all um, in place it's all dimensioned properly so the next thing I want to do is I want to do a circular pattern on this to get the teeth of our gear so if we go ahead and go up to our top toolbar to right here pattern drop down to circular pattern I'm gonna click on this circle here you see it's gonna to snap to the center point if it doesn't snap to that center point you can just move this to the center point and then the other thing we need to do is up here it says three times we need to type in how many teeth we have so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine teeth so we can type in nine here hit enter and we'll see that's going to um, circular pattern that all the way around our circle. Go ahead and just click out here in the open. Now that we have all our circles dimensioned and in the right location, we go ahead and hit the green check mark. And we're going to go to extrude. And I'm just going to drag a box over everything to select it all. So this is going to be for our base. And obviously we don't want some of these circle bump outs that are there. So you can go through, if I just flip this on the bottom here, and I can kind of zoom in and just make sure all those are unselected. Alright, so now we kind of have the base of our gear holder. If we look on our blueprint, we can see the total gear holder is 0.5 inches tall. The step is 0.3, so that's going to make this base 0.2. Go ahead and type in 0.2. And one thing I do want to do is I want to flip this so that our sketch is still going to be on the top here. So I'm going to do that green check mark, and then I'm going to go over here 
turn the sketch back on and the next thing we can do is extrude our gear so go ahead here select the gear we know our gear is 0.3 tall same thing green check mark and finally we want to cut away our holes so we're going to go to extrude again I'm going to select the center hole is going to go all the way through I'm going to select these holes here make sure you're getting every part of it and then if we go over here on our extrude menu go ahead and go to remove and that's going to cut it all through now we can go ahead and hide our sketch again and you can see we've got the basic shape of the gear holder but we're missing some of the radius edges so the next thing we're going to use is this fillet tool here and if we look on our blueprint we can see that this corner here should be a 0.25 radius so I'm going to go ahead and select all those edges once you have all those edges selected just make sure you have 0.25 inches in for the radius over here and hit the green check mark now that we're starting to take shape we're starting to get our curved edges we're going to go ahead and use fillet again and we're going to select all of these here going all the way around the gear And if you accidentally click something you don't want, you can just go over to the menu here and just click the X there, and that's going to delete that edge. Now that I have all of these selected, I can look at my blueprint again, and I can see that's going to be a 0.13 radius for that dimension. Go ahead and hit the green check mark after you do that. So now we can see we've got the shape of the gear holder. The only thing we're missing is there's a little chamfer right on the very top of the gear holder and the top of the base. So I'm going to use the chamfer tool here. And I can see on my blueprint, it's going to be a 0.02 TYP. So the TYP stands for typical. So I'm going to go ahead and select the top face of the top of the gear. And then I'm actually going to select just this outside edge here. Change my distance to 0.02. Hit enter. And that's going to chamfer that edge of the base and the edge of the gear and the circle as well. Once our gear holder is modeled, we're going to bring it into Fusion 360 to create toolpaths for it. So just like we do for the logo project, go ahead and export it as a step file. Name it gear holder, change to step, hit export. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Fusion 360. Now that I'm in Fusion 360, file, open, open from my computer. Go ahead and open up your gear holder. Then in the top left, we're going to go to Manufacture. And we're going to start with creating a new setup. Now something I want to show you that I haven't shown you before is, let's say that your model orientation is all messed up. So let's do something like this. So let's say our model orientation looks like that. It's got the X pointing the wrong way, the Z's pointing the wrong way, and Y's pointing the wrong way. How do we go about fixing that? We know we want it in this bottom left. We want Z up, X to the right, and Y back. So to do that, you're going to click on this orientation. Click on Z axis slash planes and X axis. Click on Z axis box here. Click the top face for your Z axis. Your x-axis, if it doesn't already point it to the right, is going to be this line here pointing to the right. And then your box point, same thing, bottom left. So that's a quick, easy way to change that so that your origin is right. Always double check your origin to make sure it's pointing the right way. Then we can go ahead and go to our stock setup. We know our stock is going to be a fixed size box. And we're going to go with 1.5 for the height. The depth should be 2.25 and the width should be 2.25 as well. Go ahead and hit OK. Oh, one thing I forgot to change here in the setup. So because it's going to be taller than our model, we want to make sure our model position for our Z is offset from top and change that offset to zero. So now our gear holder will be at the top of our block. So the next thing we want to do, we're going to have two, two different toolpaths, two different tools on this. So a little different than the logo project, but same concept. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our 2D pocket just like in the logo project. Go ahead and select our eighth inch end mill. So we're going to do a eighth inch flat end mill wax slash wood. We've got our tool selected. We can go to geometry. So we need to select all the spots we want it to cut out. So we want it to cut out that, this pocket here, and the bottom of all the circles. So make sure you select everything. And again, if you select the wrong thing, you can go over here, click on it, and then click this X, and it will remove it. So double check that. Make sure that's all right. Next thing we want to do is we're going to go to passes. We are going to make sure our maximum step over is at point 0.1. We're going to turn stock to leave off. We're going to turn multiple depths on. And let's leave that at 0.07. Next, let's just go ahead and check smoothing. Turn that on. Go to this last tab here. Turn lead in and lead out off. And change ramp type to plunge. Now you can go ahead and hit OK. And we can see about 9 minutes and 38 seconds for our gear holder to get cut out. So the next step is we need to do that chamfer. So to do the chamfer, we're going to do a 2D, 2D chamfer, Sele select our tool. That is going to be this quarter inch 45 degree chamfer mill. Again, the wax slash wood one. Go ahead and select that. Now this is important. You want to select the bottom of your chamfer. So go ahead and select the bottom of all three chamfers. Go to passes here, and I want you to change your chamfer clearance to zero. Last tab, turn lead in, lead out off, and hit OK. So now we can go ahead and simulate our part here. See how it cuts out. That looks good. The chamfer looks good. If I turn my tool pass off here, I can see it a little bit better. Everything looks good. One more thing we might do to make it a little bit better is go back to your chamfer here, turn smoothing on. That should just make it a little bit nicer. So the total thing, if you see here, should be about 10 minutes and 16 seconds. So be right around there. Um, if it's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, that's OK too. So once you have that done, go ahead and go to your post process. Make sure you have setup one selected so that it'll post everything and also the other thing to double check is it'll say T1 and T2 make sure that you have the two the two tools there so select setup post process go over to our post which is going to be Haas pre NGC if you're using the old one and Haas next generation if you're using the new one on either one make sure you click built-in change this high feed rate to 200 other than that, go ahead and change your file name to whatever you want to call it. So I would suggest gear holder, and I would even put your initials at the end so you know that it's your gear holder program. Then go ahead and insert your flash drive, post it to your flash drive, and go get it set up on the machine.